Are you wondering if you could travel the Dolomites and if it's really the right trip for you? I was wondering the same thing. <laughs> And after comparing it to living in Colorado and hiking there, hiking down in New Zealand, down in South America, I was really curious about that area above Venice and above Milan. So I did a ton of research before going there and I want to fill all you guys in on what I think was the best 10 day itinerary to kind of tackle the Dolomites as well as adding on Venice, Lake Garda and Lake Cuomo as part of that itinerary. So in today's video we're going to dive into these top five things here. Number five will be kind of how we did the all research. We decided to do a rental car versus doing a camper van. So in doing the research, I was really curious where to go. In the beginning, I was gonna have more of an open-ended trip, possibly a few weeks, and my sister ended up coming, so we boiled it down at 10 days. And that might suit your exact itinerary as well. We were gonna be arriving in Milano, which is what we were going to fly from New York JFK. Some people can come in from Innsbruck, which is north of the Italian Dolomites in Germany. Some people might fly into Marco Polo Airport in Venezia. Then from there, it was the decision to do an indie camper van or to rent a car. Due to time constraints, we decided to rent a car and stay in hotels to go from there. If you're curious about the camper van experience, I watched a ton of video from two some travelers that had a great experience with indie camper vans. So I'll link their channel right here. I learned a lot from their videos. Go check them out. So moving on from there, I was decided, okay, where are we gonna stay? So we went on booking.com, which you guys can probably see, link below for that. And then we decided to stay in a variety of different kind of local hotels, as well as nicer kind of bougie hotels. I'll have a video here about the Linder Height Cycling Hotel experience, Sella de Valgar my favorite spot of the entire trip out to the hiking portion. And then from there we decided, okay, how much are we gonna spend in each part? How many days? What do we really wanna see? For us, we went there for hiking first and then the food and the ambience and all that second. That was our priority for my sister and I. Before we're gonna talk about our exact itinerary, where we went during that 10 day trip from going over to Venice, up to the Dolomites, down to Lake Garda, and over to Lake Cuomo before heading back to Malpensa Airport in Milano. We're gonna jump into a quick screen recording here as to the exact locations we went to and why. Day one. So we arrived in Malpensa via Emirates Airlines and got over to Milano Centrale Railway Station. We wanted to maximize our time in the Dolomites, so we headed straight out of Milan and over to Venice. We planned one day in Venice. We really enjoyed the sights. And then the next morning, we'll be on to the Dolomites. Day three, we got up, got our Hertz rental car, and started to drive. Welcome to Cortina. Cortina de Ampezzo was our first stop. We went to a hike that day, Cerro Torre, recommended by the hotel person, not on our plan. And we went back, explored the town, grabbed some food, and then day four would start with an early morning to Tre Cime de Lavaredo. We really wanted to optimize hiking on this trip, so we chose to go there first. This hike was not too hard, great views and definitely worth a stop. We get back in the car, have a quick lunch break at this spot along the highway on your way to Lago de Bre. And it was a kind of overcast day, it's so not that busy, but I would say it's kind of commercial, maybe worth a skip. Day five, we packed up our bags and moved over to Linder Cycling Hotel in Selva de Valgardino. Such a great spot. And then from there, we went over to the highlight of the day in Ortice to see Ceseda amazing highlight of our trip, really one of the ones we're looking forward to, and it's so worth it, as you can see the views here. Grabbed a beer, then we headed down, and spent the rest of the day relaxing. Day six, a chill day in Selva de Valgardina at Linder Cycling Hotel. The amenities of this particular hotel with the pool, the rooftop deck. Day seven, headed out to the next hike, which would be the Sasaluango Loop. A little bit longer than a Che Chirme de Liveredo hike. Some cool views, some good huts to stop at, and overall a good day. Day eight. We move on from there down south to Sermion and Lago de Garda. Exploring the castle here, Lake Garda. So cool to stop at this castle. I did not know about it. Not too expensive and totally worth the experience. Day nine would be at Lake Cuomo. Bellagio along Lake Cuomo. For us, we stayed in Bellagio because that was an easy, accessible point to the other areas there via the ferry. And overall, it was a nice stop. Finally, on day 10, we headed from Lago de Como with our car back to Malpensa Airport to return at Hertz rental car. And that was our trip. Number three, we're gonna talk about the most overrated things about the Dolomites and maybe places you wanna skip. 
And that Lago de Bray was beautiful, but I also think it's very touristy and maybe there's other places to go. And I think it was due to the severe drought. The lake was pretty much 30% dried up and it just didn't kind of do it for me was the Sasolongo Loop. We did that in the middle of our trip and it was cool to walk by different huts and stuff like that. But again, I felt it was too commercialized. You'd walk by a certain hut and you see some sheep and all that was nice. You felt like one second you were in nature and the next second there was a ton of cars parked right there. And the last spot that I did not think was that great and I do think it was overrated is Lake Cuomo. We stayed there for about two days. We stayed in the Bellagio area. And honestly, I think it was cool to stay there at that point, easily accessible to the other areas there by the ferry or the boat. But overall, I think it was not really my liking. If you just want to go to Italy to eat, drink a ton of wine, take some cute pictures, maybe it's for you. Number two, we're gonna talk about what I think were the underrated areas, what was so, so amazing about the Dolomites, what I truly enjoyed. Woo! So for me, I have three main areas that I think are underrated and are really amazing on this trip. First one is really Council of Bonus, so I'll say Venice. So now overall, I've been to Venice three times and I still think it's worth it. If you can avoid the high times, I think it's such a unique, cool city. And obviously you might say it's not gonna be there in the future because it is sort of sinking. Moving on to the prime area, the Dolomites and the rest of the trip. So I think Trecime de Lavaredo was really cool. You've got Cadini de Messerina, which is the amazing kind of little viewpoint. The next one on our trip, kind of going in the order we drove was or to say, and going to Seseda particularly. I do think from the aerial footage, Seseda is an amazing amount to look at. Unfortunately, it is on top of a ski resort as well. But why I also like that so much is we stayed in Selva de Velgardina, which is a town close to there. We didn't stay in or to say. And I actually really like Selva de Velgardina. We stayed in Linder Cycling Hostel, which is also a video we're gonna have plugged here. And I wanna show you all about it because it was really one of the more bougie, relaxing portions of our trip. And the views are amazing. The next and the last one that I really loved about this trip was a stop along the way. And we went over to Lake Garda on our way to Lake Cuomo. We weren't sure we we're gonna stop there or not, but it was really cool. I love castles, I'm really obsessed with them. And we stopped at the castle there and it was such a cool experience and not that expensive. Okay, so number one, my honest review and the budget breakdown. So we're gonna have the budget breakdown listed here. The budget breakdown, here are some numbers. 1277 accommodation, 1157 rental car, Cost per person, $2,000. I think overall the honest review was, I liked how we did it. And this is why I liked how we did it. I think going the route of having your own rental car was really huge for this experience. Yes, the Hertz car rental was the most expensive part of our trip, but having that freedom and that experience with my sister to be able to take off in the rental car from Marco Polo Airport in Venice, return it at Malpensa Airport in Milano, and go through the Dolomites at our own speed was huge. So that Tyrolean area up there felt very unique. It definitely almost sometimes didn't feel like Italy to me which is definitely a stereotype what actually feels like Italy to you. Overall, I would say going to the Dolomites is completely worth it if you're a hiker and you really wanna enjoy the Italian flair, the Italian ambiance. I know most of you watching are probably from the United States and I know from my age here in my 30s of the people in their 60s, going to Italy is a popular destination. Hopefully you enjoyed today's video. Check out the other videos linked above. You know what to do to the next video. Do not forget to explore more and I'll see you there.